This is Michael Cowan, and welcome to Trial Lawyer Nation. You are the leader in the courtroom, and you want the jury to be looking to you for the answers. When you figure out your theory, never deviate. You want the facts to be consistent, complete, and credible. The defense has no problem running out the clock. Delay is the friend of the defense. It's tough to grow a firm by trying to hold on and micromanage. You've got to front load a simple structure for jurors to be able to hold on to. What types of creative things can we do as lawyers, even though we don't have a trial setting? Whatever you've got to do to make it real, you've got to do to make it real. But the person who needs convincing is you. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Trial Lawyer Nation. Your source to win bigger verdicts, get more cases, and manage your law firm. And now, here's your host, noteworthy author, sought-after speaker, and renowned trial lawyer, Michael Cowan. Today on Trial Lawyer Nation, I'm excited that Tom Kirker, uh, known as Attorney Tom on social media, is joining us. Um, how are you doing today, Tom? Hey, Michael. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm a, a longtime listener of Trial Lawyer Nation. Well, I'm excited uh, to have you on, uh, frankly and selfishly, because I want to learn from you. Uh, and for those of you who don't know who Attorney Tom is, you probably one of the I guess, top attorneys in the social media game and one of the only people I know that actually gets cases from social media. Yeah, that, that's a great comment. <laughs> um, I, we talked a little bit before the recording. Um, th- there is a lot of misconception about social yeah. media. I think a lot of people chase it because they think it's this shiny object. But uh, in reality, the amount of cases that come from it are far fewer than what people think. Now, with that said... <laughs> Um, I am optimistic that there are cases to be got from social media. And I think as the generation that grew up with social media, the the younger people become the primary actors in the workforce, the, there will be even more cases to be got from it. But but certainly it's it's not all that it's cracked up to be. I see some lawyers um, that that kind of preach this gospel and I not to sound egotistical, but I, I literally get a hundred times the engagement that they do. And I, I just, I see what they're projecting and it, 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 it's just, it's not true. But yeah. yes, I was uh, last year in 2022, I was the most watched plaintiff's lawyer um, and actually the most watched lawyer in general on Facebook. I did roughly 500 million minutes of watch time. Uh, on YouTube, we did roughly... 270 million views. Uh, and those are really the two platforms that I care about, Facebook and YouTube. I do have a TikTok following as well, but I think I can explain why that is is worthless to me. <laughs> and before we dive in, I don't want to forget uh, to give a shout out to our sponsor, Law Pods. Uh, if you have a podcast and you want to make it really easy, uh, you can go call law, law Pods. They make my job so easy because all I have to do is talk to people, great people like you, and ask questions about what I'm interested in. They handle all the production. They handle all the distribution, the editing, and everything else. So just want to give a shout out to Law Pods, and then we can get back into this. So, Tom, I want to start off with a, just a little bit about you. So how, how long have you been practicing law? Yeah, so I graduated law school in 2018, barred shortly after that. Um, I started up my own law firm. I actually signed a lease for an office uh, before I even took the bar. So I was under a lot of pressure to pass the bar because if I didn't, <laughs> I would have had an office lease. So I started my own law firm right from the get-go. Um, flash forward, uh, we just completed year four. Um, going on year five, I have four offices. I have an office in Houston, Lake Charles, New Orleans, and Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, four, well, five lawyers. I have myself and Eric, who's down the hall here in Houston. And then I have one lawyer who ha- at, at each other office and a staff of, I think we have six people or five people because 10, 10 people total, including myself. Wow. What made you decide to go off on your own right away instead of working for someone else first? So I grew up in the legal business. Both my parents are trial lawyers. Um, my mom doesn't practice anymore. My dad practices. Um, I, my dad is my best friend, my mentor. I wanted to do anything. I would have done anything to work for him, but he is very anti nepotism. And he told me that he would not hire me and I, I would have to go earn it on my own. And I said, okay, well, if you're not going to hire me, 
I'm just going to start my own firm and figure it out. And things have come full circle because since then, and since uh, the success that we've had, my father has offered to uh, bring me on to work for him full time and, and in my own thing. But now the, the math doesn't quite work um, yeah. <laughs> be, be, because we, we found our little niche and uh, it, it's it's producing. So. so you get out of law school 2018, you know, sign a lease, pass the bar. You got to get some cases now. Uh, yes. And this is my whole origin story on social media. And I tell, I love this story, uh, lucky or fortunate or however you want to call it. Before I started my law firm, I did, I was the guy everybody made fun of because I didn't have social media. When I was in high school, when Facebook was popular or college and Instagram was popular, I was the guy who didn't have any of these things. And um, when I started my own law firm, I, I had no money. So I decided to make videos. Um, I, I made a whole bunch of videos before while I was waiting for bar results. Um, didn't release them because I couldn't because my whole screen name is Attorney Tom and I wasn't licensed then. <laughs> but, 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 but I started filming videos to, to, to get ready. I passed the bar. Eight days into opening up my law firm in the spring of 2019, uh, a little girl at a Houston Astros baseball game gets hit in the head with a line drive at a baseball game it, it, because, because they didn't have netting down the foul pole. It was a really tragic thing. I made a YouTube video about it that night. So the incident happens. I have a video up within probably four hours of going over the case law. There's Supreme Court case on point, assumption of the risk. You get hit by a foul ball, SOL. Um, I make that video... The video gets maybe 500 or 1,000 views overnight. I get a phone call the next day from the local Channel 2 News. They say, hey, Tom, we saw your YouTube video. We're running a story on this. Do you want to be the legal expert for the story on the Channel 2 News? Absolutely happy, happy to help. They come to my office. They interview me. That story runs at the 5 o'clock news. And on the 5 o'clock news, it says Tommy Kirker, personal injury lawyer. At 5.45, my phone rings. Hey, Mr. Kirker, I saw you on the Channel 2 News. It said you're a personal injury lawyer. My 18-year-old son was just killed by an 18-wheeler. Oh, my gosh. And it was a case that, you know, flash forward two years, a little bit over two years, we settled it for $4.5 million. Wow. So I got this big case right off the bat, eight days into practicing law. And again, I, I grew up in the industry, and my, my, whole branding, my, my whole brand is catastrophic personal injury. So that's how I project myself. I really had no interest. That's why I became a lawyer is to be a trial lawyer, to fight for the little guy. I grew up, I, I probably have sat through 30 trials in my life before I got licensed. Um, j j just by being lucky enough to be, you know, grown up in a, in a family of plaintiff's lawyers. So I just took advantage of the opportunity. So I, I saw that at work and I just, I, I dove head first into content creation because I just thought if I got one of those cases a year, uh, it will pay for itself and then some. Absolutely. So how did you decide what type of content to create? Trial and error. Trial and error. I just created a whole bunch of content. So I started with a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel obviously immediately produced this big result. But if anybody's ever tried posting on YouTube, it's incredibly hard to grow. So I was getting 100 views, 300 views, 50 views, 1,000 views for, per, per video, which is not a lot. And then um, this new platform came up called TikTok in early 2019. I joined it because I heard a lot of hype about it. I was the second or third lawyer to join TikTok. Um, I immediately went from zero followers to probably 300,000 followers in maybe wow. three months. And I was getting millions and millions and millions of views. And I posted two TikToks a day for 18 months straight without missing a day while simultaneously making YouTube videos while simultaneously practicing law. After that initial euphoric state of, wow, I'm getting millions and millions of views w wears off because after you know you post a video, it gets a million views, you think you're king of the world. But then once you do it for the 700th time, 
it's not a big deal. I took a step back and I said, what, what do I really have to show for this? Because my TikTok was literally getting hundreds of millions of views in a 12 month span. I, I grew it to 750,000 followers or whatever. Meanwhile, my YouTube channel, which was slowly growing, was producing cases fairly consistently, left and right. I, I, made, I made a video on my YouTube channel that is a terrible video. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. And I went through the public trial exhibits of the Roundup trial. When Brett Wisner um, got his big verdict, all those exhibits were made public. So I literally just made a YouTube video and I went through the slides of the defense and it's a really, really boring video. It's made terribly, it was filmed on a webcam. The audio is bad. It had maybe four or 500 views. It probably still only has four or 500 views. But if you're somebody who's going to watch a poorly made video for an hour and 15 minutes, you probably are somebody who's affected by this particular issue. So I think from that video, I got seven or eight roundup cases from. So, you know, it's things like that. I, I, you, you can either get hundreds of millions of videos that are worthless, or you can get a thousand views that are worth something. So really the last 24 months, my sole focus has been on long form video content, YouTube and Facebook primarily, which I think um, have exponentially better benefits uh, than the short form content. What do you mean by long form content? Sure. So um, long form content is eight to 12 minutes long, at least. So at least eight minutes long. You probably don't want to go past 12 minutes um, unless you have a very, very highly produced piece. And the, the opposite of long form content is short form content, which is your TikToks, your Instagram reels, the things that that maybe you associate with social media. Um, those are 15 seconds to a minute long videos, and they are controlled solely by the algorithm. And what I mean by that is if you scroll through TikTok or whatever, and I'll, I'll mute it, but, but, but if you scroll through TikTok, even if you follow somebody, even if you follow somebody, it doesn't mean anything because the algorithm is decides what to show people. So I could have, and I do have, 712,000 followers right now on TikTok, but I can make a video and nobody sees it if the algorithm decides to, to shut me off. So I could go on for hours about why short form content is ineffective, at least right now. Oh, that's, I, that's a big question. I mean, have, did you, have you made any money off the, all the hundreds of millions of TikTok views? No, no. Yeah, I, you I, know, I, I, have I haven't made... I haven't made the only case study where it was semi-relevant um, for me was when the Travis Scott concert happened. Uh, it happened about two football fields away from my house. Um, I, I made a video about it. It got a bunch of traction. Um, th there were some people who had inquiries about that particular case just because it was a, a lot of Gen Z in the uh, uh, affected. But... Um, in hindsight, that's a very rare instance. Um, and for the amount of views, the hundreds of millions of views I've gotten over the past few years, um, it's definitely not a positive ROI. Why is it that the long form content, the YouTube, the Facebook, you think converts better, turns into cases better than like the short form I think, form I think TikTok? it all has to do with brand recognition. The average person on a TikTok lifespan watches anywhere between 40 and 60 videos. So they're just mindlessly scrolling, swipe up, swipe up, swipe up. So even if they watch your video and engage with your video, they're not gonna remember who you are. I couldn't name 10 people that I follow on TikTok that I follow just for TikTokers. Meanwhile, YouTube and Facebook, they're not algorithm dependent in a sense. It, 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 what makes them good makes them bad. What makes it bad is it's extremely hard to grow on these platforms because there's such a limited, such a limited availability of being recommended by this algorithm and, and expanding to your new audience. But once people find your content and like it, 
they will come back and watch that video again and again and again, not watch the video again and again. They will come back and watch you again and again and again. And if you have somebody's attention for eight to 12 minutes, well, that, that, that's real attention. That's, that's brand recognition. I get stopped when I go to the computer store or when I'm eating, I, I get stopped all the time. I'm some, some people's favorite YouTubers and YouTubers are kind of like mini celebrities. I mean, it's, um, it, it, it's, uh, it's a whole different ball game. And I think it has to do with just quite frankly, the attention span. And so how do you make content that people actually want to watch? Um, that is, that is the hard part that we spend a lot of time thinking about that. Um, if you've any, if you've ever watched any of my content, I call it edutainment. I, I try really to make it entertaining for people to watch. And also I don't just harp on plaintiff's issues. I, even though I'm a plaintiff's lawyer, I don't talk about personal injury. I mean, I do every once out, out of every 10 videos, but if, if you watch my videos, I never once tell people, Hey, you should hire me. I'm doing this as an advertisement. I'm doing this legitimately to add value to people's lives. I, I make a lot of videos about police interactions, about people asserting their rights or not asserting their rights or mistake, you know, being mistaken in what their rights are. That's not some, that's not an area of law that I practice, but it, it adds value to the people watching. So um, I, what, what I would tell, what I, what I would tell lawyers, because I watch a lot of legal content and a lot of people come to me and ask me for advice, and all the legal content is kind of the same. It's all about how great that lawyer is, how great their firm is, how they're the best trial lawyer of all time, how they've recovered tens of millions of dollars. Well, no, nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that. It, it, it's, it's really, if you can make content selflessly, meaning what is the person watching it going to get out and expect nothing in return, then you're going to start getting traction. That makes perfect sense. Uh, now, some of your videos are entertaining, though. I mean, I watched, I actually scrolled through your TikTok stuff uh, earlier today to prepare uh, TikTok. I, I discovered TikTok when I had COVID the first time and just had no attention span. And sure. it was perfect for, you know, brain fog and no attention span. Yep. Uh, and, and being by myself for, you know, eight days and having to, you know, it, it was good. Uh, right. but it's, it, but it is totally mindless. Um, uh, but how do you, uh, how do you make the videos actually entertaining? What are some things you do to make it fun? Well, um, it starts out with the topic. It's got, it's gotta be an entertaining topic. And if you have a good topic, it doesn't necessarily mean your video is going to be successful. So then it gets down to how do you how do you decide to present this topic, and how or you know like for instance on my, on my channel this morning, um, I filmed a video. It will probably be released in a few days. We play a game called Case or No Case. So we watch a certain set of facts or dumb people doing dumb things on the internet, as I often say, and it's a little bit comical. Um, I, I try to, we have to curate this content that is one engaging, but two, not too graphic because then the social media sites will destroy the video. Um, so, but, and we just kind of walk through it, you know, we walk through, okay, what are the different situations? What, what could go wrong here? Who's responsible? Who's at fault? You know, oftentimes fault is a spectrum. If you were, and you get you get engagement. Hey, Hey, members of the audience, if you were on a jury, how, how much, percentage of fault would you assign to party A versus party B? So it's just, it's the little things that, that, that all add up and keeping the video fast paced, talking fast, cutting out any dead space. Nobody wants to hear about your life tangents or offsets. I, I have it, lawyers, again, this is another huge mistake. Lawyers send me their videos all the time and ask for edits and the videos always start off the same. The videos start off with, hey, my name's Tom Kirker. I'm a trial lawyer based out of Houston, Texas. I've recovered $30 million in <laughs> fees, or not in fees, in settlements over the past three years, blah, 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 blah. They go on to their backstory. I, I graduated from South Texas College of Law. I always knew I wanted to be a trial lawyer. Okay, now let's jump into the video. So you just rambled on for two minutes, and people are going to click off. 
if you go if you go watch one of my YouTube videos, this is how the YouTube videos start. Hey y'all, it's Attorney Tom. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to this accident. Let's jump right into it. So within eight seconds, people are already getting to why they clicked on the video. And that goes into a more deeper discussion on what the YouTube and Facebook algorithms want, which again, uh, I, I could talk on that for a very long time, but well, let's. That. I want to hear a little bit about that, just because you know a, a lot of people I think spend a lot of time putting up videos and then no one ever sees them. Sure. Okay. This is my most ex favorite topic to discuss. At the end of the day, Facebook and YouTube, all they care about is making money. Okay, I used to phrase this conversation a different way, but when I'm talking to lawyers, I think money really gets gets people going. So all YouTube and Facebook want to do is make money. So then the question is, how do they make money? If y'all have ever clicked on a YouTube or Facebook video before, you know there's that little ad that runs before the video, a little commercial. Sometimes it's in the middle of the video, but an ad runs during that video. The way Facebook and YouTube work it's a rev share split, 55-45. So if that ad cost a dollar to be placed there, whoever made the video is getting 55 cents and YouTube or Facebook is making 45 cents. So all they care about is making money. So then we work backwards. If YouTube wants to make the most amount of money, what are they gonna do? They are going to promote the videos that make them the most amount of money. Now, what videos make them the most amount of money? The videos that make them the most amount of money are the videos that are watched at a higher retention rate as a percentage. And what I mean by that is if you have a 10 minute long video and the average person watches eight minutes of that video, YouTube will flag that video as an 80% retention video. Why is that important? Well, if somebody watches a vast majority of your video, if not all of your video, they are more likely to click on another video. And if they click on another video, YouTube gets to serve another ad. So they are making more money. So if you make a video that is 10 minutes long and the average person only watches one minute of it, they have deep analytics that show they are unhappy with this video, which is why they clicked off. And if they are unhappy with that video, they are probably increasing the chances that they will end their session on the website, meaning that they will not be able to serve any more ads during the duration of that session. So YouTube will say, let's not promote this video to anybody because the limited data that we have shows that people will click off because it's a bad video and they are more likely to click off the site completely. So when you are making a video, the only way to get recommended on Facebook and YouTube is to have a video that has a retention of probably, even though it's not confirmed, but I've, I've gone to all the conferences and listened to all the experts. The only way to get your video suggested on Facebook or YouTube is to have a video that has a retention of at least 70%. So what that means is if it's a 10 minute video, the average person must watch at least seven minutes of it. So that, that is really the only way to grow. And I think a lot of people have hard times making 10 minute content that can get a 70% engagement rate. What is it you have to do, you found, to keep people watching? It's really just practice. It's about putting effort into the video, into the script, making sure that there's no dull moments, saving the best for last. You know, if, 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 you have, if you're analyzing a case, if you and I are analyzing a case, okay, if I go, what, Michael, what, what, was your, what was your largest verdict? What's your largest verdict to date? Jury verdict? That's like three seven yes. or some of that. Yeah, settlements have done a lot better, but verdict, I think like three, I can't remember the exact number. It's like three seven, some of that. Okay, so let's just say I was making a video about your trial, okay? Yeah. And immediately I said the ending of it. I said, 
In today's video, I'm going to I'm going to be discussing sitting down with Michael Cohen, the host of Trial Lawyer Nation, a badass trial lawyer, and we're going to be talking about this case where he prevailed and he recovered 40 million dollars or whatever. Well, I've just given away the key piece of information. People already yeah. know what the case settled for. So it's it's the little things. Like instead, I would phrase it like, "Hey, hey, y'all! Today we're we're sitting down with Michael Cohen, the host of Trial Lawyer Nation, a badass trial lawyer. We're going to be going over his very controversial case that he just finished, and we're going to be going in the ins and outs, and you know, stick stick around to the end to see what happened, right? Yeah. So that, that that seems so basic and so simple, but that will keep people thirty seconds longer a minute longer waiting to the end and all of that helps your retention and if your retention is well then th then you're going to start getting suggested by these platforms and it's the opposite of what most trial lawyers would do which is to brag on the result first thing <laughs> yeah that's right that's exactly right because nobody wants to hear what a badass you are they want to learn for their nobody own reasons they're interested yeah no n nobody cares i i could you know <laughs> they, they 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 just don't they just don't. I mean, it, it all kind of sounds the same. I mean, if you, you go to any trial lawyer's website, you'll see great results. You'll see, you know, millions of dollars here or there. Nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> yep. So one thing that I find uh, can be a struggle for some, especially younger lawyers, is the, the difference between content that gets views and content that converts. And I, I think I specifically want to go is, you know, you can be outrageous to the extent that gets a lot of views, but makes you lose your credibility. You can, if you're really good looking, you can do a thirst trap video. And, you know, if you're a guy, show off your, your six pack. If you're a girl, show off whatever you're going to show off. You get a lot of people looking at that. Is that good or bad, though, for your brand as a lawyer? So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think I may be agnostic on whether it's good or bad. I would say I would say more accurately, it's probably underutilized. So if you get hundreds of millions of views and you have nothing to show for it, well, then, you know, I would argue maybe you're, there's something wrong with your funnel, right? All right. So, um, and, and this is a view that I've had that it, that is evolving. If you've asked me six months ago, I was really turned off by short form content for all the reasons why we discussed. Uh, and, and, you know, and I've lived it. I've had my own personal experiences with it. Um, but what I think a lot of people who are doing these type of videos, and I know exactly, I, I see them all the time, um, they're, they're, they're under the impression if I make these videos at my top of funnel, it directly leads to cases. What I would suggest to them is, okay, if you're going to make these kind of videos, that's that's probably fine, again, for the reasons that short-form content is ineffective. I think people have a short attention span. So if you're making videos that are maybe goofy or losing your credibility, I don't think it's much of a hit, to be honest. And th that's because people are just going to forget about you because, again, the validity of short-form content is non-existent, in my opinion. But... What you can do is use those views to get them into your funnel. So what I would tell them is if you're making short form content without long form content, you're, you're doing it wrong. So you, where I'm getting at this is the short form content should be a funnel to long form content. And your long form content is probably what is going to convert the cases. So um, with respect to the losing the credibility or the thirst traps or all of that kind of stuff. I, I don't think, I, I really don't think it's that big of an issue, but I would say that if you're, I, I don't know, I, I've already said it. I don't want it to sound redundant, but, but again, yeah. I just think it's pointless. So how much time do you spend uh, a week, let's say, uh, on your marketing efforts, on content creation, coming up with ideas, learning how to yes. distribute it? So. So my filming, um, I, I film Monday mornings, 8 a.m. to probably 2 p.m. And that I try to film for the entire week. So then, then I'm not filming anymore. I have a separate company. That's my media company. It's called Attorney Tom LLC. It has three employees full-time for production. And th they handle all the editing. 
They, they handle everything. I don't look at videos until they are finished and live, which sometimes is a problem because I posted a video four months ago and one of the editors spelled negligence wrong. And I got Ooh. roasted in the comments because, you know, they would think a personal injury lawyer should know how to spell negligence. But uh, I, I try to film on Mondays. I try to block out the entire morning. And then sometimes we have to go past lunch. Uh, and, and then I, that frees up the rest of my week. Now, uh, I'm kind of in a little bit of a crisis, personal crisis, identity crisis, because I grew up wanting to be a trial lawyer. But now that this content has really done quite well, um, I'm kind of transitioning to maybe focusing more on my content and doing this full time. I hired Eric, who's my COO about six months ago. He's a great lawyer, licensed in California, Missouri, and uh, Texas. He took over six months ago to kind of run the day-to-day -day operations. He's really caught up to speed now. That has freed me up for a lot of uh, things that uh, I, I can now work on a lot of projects that I can work on. So internally, even though I, I'm fairly efficient with the content creation now, I'm, I'm starting to push uh, a lot harder into it. And a lot of my goals for 2023 uh, involve more content creation and less practicing law. It is a tough balance because, I mean, I get all these marketing ideas and then, but I'm too busy practicing law to do them, uh, right. to execute them or to execute them well. Because I think, you know, one of the least effective things is just to do things sporadically. I mean, I'm going right. to go put out, you know, three videos a week for four weeks, and then I'm not going to do anything else for six months. And then, you know, you just, uh, just same for a newsletter and, and or any kind of advertising. I think you need to be consistent. Yeah, uh, that's right. It, it it took my YouTube channel two and a half years to get the baseline uh, partnership with YouTube. So that's 10,000 subscribers, 4,000 watch hours. Um, and then the last two and a half years, we literally went from 10,000 subscribers to half a million subscribers. And, you know, an, an average of, I think we did 270 million views in 2022 and 230 million views in 2021. Wow. So, you know, it's it, it but it, but it took a lot of time to get there. But more importantly, and a lot of you videos. Built... I think I've made 600 8 to 12 minute videos in the last 4 years. Oh, wow. Do you think there's any way to make it work with less effort? I guess less effort's probably the word. Less time. If someone doesn't have that kind of time, that kind of production capacity, like I know people and I even tried it, you know, they They'll, they'll run some TV or some billboards and, uh, you know, it's, it's like pouring a salt shaker in the ocean. You're not going to change the salinity of the entire ocean with a little salt shaker. And, you know, and like yep. with all the people spending millions or tens of millions of dollars to say on TV or advertising, if you spend even like 200,000, no one's going to notice it. I mean, right. no one's going to remember you. Is it the same in social that if you're like, like not spending enough to be just right up there, it's, it's almost just wasting your money? Well, well, that's the beauty about social. You see, see and th this is a this is a very important discussion that okay. that I'm a, a true believer on. There's two types of social media. Okay, there's pay to play social media, which is what you're referring to. If I put, you know, if you give your marketing guy hundred grand a month to spend mm -hmm. it on Facebook AdWords or Google AdWords or Facebook ads or whatever. Okay, then there's what I'm doing, which is organic social media, and again. I use a picture of John Morgan. I have a little presentation that I'm going to give at a Filevine Summit. And I have a little picture of John Morgan just because they spend an ungodly amount of money. Okay. Yeah. But let's, let's work through this flow. If you are Facebook and you get a, you get a million dollars from John Morgan, okay, well, Facebook needs to send, give out those ads in the most optimized way possible. So, who are they going to place their ads on top of? Are they going to place their ads on top of a beauty creator who's doing makeup? Or are they going to place their ads on top of Attorney Tom, a personal injury lawyer? My Facebook channel in 2022 made me, not cost, made me about $600,000, a little bit under. Because it's that 55, 45 rev share yeah. split. If John Morgan is paying a dollar to pl place an ad on my video, I'm making 55 cents. Now, obviously it doesn't work 
in that capacity, you're probably realistically making about $7 per every thousand views for every monetizable view, because not every view is monetizable. But you're making about $7 per every thousand monetizable views. But with that said, there's the, the conversation is deeper than that. Yes, we're making money off of it, but YouTube is going to promote my videos because they know they can serve ads on top of it. So I'm getting tons of organic growth because Facebook knows that there's no other competitor. Now, the con of what I'm telling you is, do I lose cases from it? Do people who are otherwise in the market to hire a plaintiff's lawyer, are they watching my videos and then are they getting a John Morgan ad and hiring John Morgan? That answer is unequivocally yes. And I know it's happening and I'm okay with it happening. And I know it's happening because the ad spend on my videos keeps going up, meaning I have the market. And if for whatever reason people don't want to spend ads on my videos, that's fine because then I'll just end up gobbling up the cases. So yeah. it's a it's a win win either way. But going back, so 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 there's a difference between paying to play on social media and organic social media. Now I've seen personally, my firm does run pay to play social media campaigns. We are invested in some mass torts. We are invested in some, some other litigations that I've never even made a video about. And I wouldn't make a video about just because it's not, you know, I, I don't advertise my services. I don't, you know, I don't just tell people that they should hire me. With that said, online marketing can be very effective. Uh, you, you can get people through Facebook, through Google um, for, for a whole lot cheaper than you can if, if you're going to go with a television campaign or, um, or a billboard campaign. And the best part about it is once you're done with your money, it just stops, right? You're, you're, not, you're not committed to some long form contract um, or, or anything like that. So it, it can be very, very effective on social media, especially if you're targeted and you have a, 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 an ad buyer who knows what they're doing. And we've seen some great success with some of our ad buys, but um, you know, that, 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 I, I, that's a completely separate conversation than the social media play because the social media play is actually 100% organic and also it, it makes money. It doesn't lose money. I guess what I was trying to ask is, but to even get seen in the social media play, you have to be able to produce so much content on a regular basis that people actually want to see. That's right. That, that is true. Each year, the law firm of Cowan Rodriguez Peacock pays millions of dollars in co-counsel fees to attorneys nationwide on trucking and commercial vehicle cases. If you have an injury case involving death or catastrophic injuries and would like to partner with our firm, please contact us by calling 210-941-1301 to discuss the case in detail and see where we can add value in a partnership. And now, back to the show. So what advice would you have is if someone only has, let's say they can give an hour a week to it, is it even worth doing or should they spend that hour doing something else? An hour a week is probably not worth it. You yeah, probably, that's, you probably need, I would say four hours a week is probably your minimum. And you can do things like block it off, like what I do on Mondays that, you, you know, you can, you can have a set time that is your content production time. And then you can outsource a lot of the, the heavy lifting. Like for instance, for every hour of content, there's probably 10 hours of editing behind it, right? So you can hire editors, you can, you, but, but at the end of the day, if you're not committing four hours to making content and video uh, origina idea origination, it's not gonna work. And do you think the, the lawyer has to do all that? Or do you think there's people out there that can do that for you and you just show up and record? It will never be as good. Trust me, I, I'm actively even still look looking for an idea person. If I had somebody who could give me ideas, I could walk in with a script that was beautiful, well done. It, that person just doesn't exist unless it's another lawyer. So unless you want to, unless you have the pockets to commit to hiring a lawyer full time for content origination, I, I, I think it's probably best if you just do it yourself. 
Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people out there making a lot of money off lawyers and delivering very little for it. And that, and I think that th those people say, well, if you only have you know 30 minutes a, a week, an hour, you know, we'll do something. And you know, and the only and then they'll show, well, you got this many views, but they don't get any cases. And yeah, exactly. It's it's the shiny object. They they're just chasing this shiny object, and they have no idea what it entails. I mean, you know, j just for reference, I did 500 million minutes watched on Facebook last year. I think I probably generated under 25 cases from it. Wow. On, for, for 500 million minutes watched. Now, some of them were really, really great cases. Um, you know, I, 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 I saw, you know, we have a, a broken back from a, a, an oil rig, or I guess it's not an oil rig, um, a bro broken back working on an oil pipeline in Wyoming. That's going to be a great case. That is a great case. Um, well, I got some, a, a kid who's run out or a father who was run over by a water truck and the kid was a longtime subscriber of mine. Um, oh, wow. uh, you know, there, 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 there are some, and there are a couple more commercial cases. And again, I, I, you know, all my branding says catastrophic personal injury. I literally say in some of my videos as jokes, you know, if you have, a, if you're on a fender bender and your back hurts or whatever, don't call me. Don't, you know, that's just, that's not the kind of case that I ever envisioned. That's not why I became a lawyer. 500 million minutes and under 25 cases. That's not, you know, I, I see some lawyers on social media that, that say that they're getting hundreds of cases a month. And, um, it, it's just not, it's just not true. And it's also, what is the, what are the quality of, of what's, I mean, you know, you can, you know, I, I tried TV advertising on my own in South Texas a little, about 10 years ago. And, you know, we got a lot of calls, but they were all crap. I mean, um, right. we lost money doing it. And now, you know, I'm investing with someone else that knows what they're doing in, in New Mexico, spending a lot more. And we're getting good calls, but we're doing it right. But I couldn't afford to do it right until about 20 years into my career. Right. And, well, that, and that's the beauty for, for someone like me, who's a small fry. My social media... Is 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 a great revenue producing source. Yeah. I know with my very limited small firm that um, I can sleep at night because I know I'm going to make X amount of dollars a month just because of the the amount of views that I'm getting. Now yeah. I do have these entities completely separate. I have a media company and I have my law firm, but you know I'm, I'm the hundred percent owner of of both. So you know it, it all kind of goes to me, the same place. But it, but it really does allow me to sleep at night because I know I can, I can afford to, to pay my, my bills if uh, the, ca the cases don't come in because I'm, I'm making money from the videos, which I think yeah. uh, it, it's just a, it's a positive cycle because that incentivizes me to make more videos. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. And then, you know, every now and then a, a good case will come in. Oh, that's great. No, and, and the fact that you're actually making, I think you're the only lawyer I've ever met that actually makes money off their videos as opposed to having to pay money to get people to watch their videos. Yeah, and it's 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 totally possible. I mean, I with, who I learn from is not other lawyers. I learn from social media influencers. I go to the conference. Do you know who Mr. Beast is? I've heard the name. I don't know who it is. M M Mr. Beast is a 23-year-old guy from uh, South Carolina. He or maybe North Carolina. He is the most watched YouTuber on the planet. He has hundreds of millions of followers. Gets tens of billions of views a year and uh, he he's a mad scientist he 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 puts on a conference every year in LA for creators by creators um i I've, I've gone to it the last few years and you'd be amazed there are 18 year old kids who are making half a million dollars a month on youtube and you know they, it's just it's just a totally different mentality so that's that's kind of the mindset set that I've adopted. I've gone for making the best videos possible. And then if somebody likes me and trusts me enough after watching my content to pick up the phone and call my law firm in the event something happens, well, that that's an added bonus. But um, I think for long-term content creation, uh, especially with the amount of time and resources that we put into it, it has to be, you have to have that value up front and then you're, you have to kind of treat the cases as a, as a bonus. Wow. Yeah. Which is the exact opposite of what most of the uh, social media marketing people out there are selling you on.
Right. That's right. They they only they only sell you about cases. They say you yeah. know you spend X, you get X amount of cases or Y amount of cases. It's not true, and it's not a good way to approach social media. I I tell everybody is your goal should be to make money with social media. That should be your goal because that incentivizes the platform to push your content. So it's a workaround. It's just another way of of trying to get my story out because originally what I tell people is, hey, just make the best content possible. If you make the best content possible, it, your, your content will get recommended to the algorithm or to these platforms. But that doesn't really resonate with people. So if you flip the script and you go with the money messaging, YouTube and Facebook want to make money. How do they make money? They make money by showing videos with ads on top of them. People watch more videos when they watch a video to completion, right? So your whole goal should be to make good content so people watch it to completion so YouTube and Facebook can make more money, thereby you make money, and thereby Facebook and YouTube recommending your content. That, that's how you should think about it. That's awesome. Well, I've realized that I'm never going to be able to compete with you in this space, uh, which is okay. I'm doing fine uh, with my model, but uh, right, you're. But the, I mean, yeah, and and your model's genius too, you know. And and not everybody yeah. can do what I'm doing, and and I yeah. couldn't do what you're doing. You know, I, I don't have the credibility to have you this will. kind of podcast. <laughs> and you know, it, you know, if yeah. we're breaking the fourth wall, the, the the whole agenda of trial lawyer nation is to show how much of a badass you are and to keep learning and learning in front of everybody. So someone like me, when I get a case and I'm in, in over my head, I pick up the phone and I call you and I say, Hey Mike, I, I got a great case to refer you. Am I, I am I right? Yes and no. The honestly, if we're just gonna like I said, break the fourth wall and talk about marketing, the the podcast itself. I've gotten a couple, I've gotten two or three really, really good cases off the podcast. So, I mean, definitely the return investment is there, but it's it's not, I, I kind of view it as the first part of our marketing funnel. So, we have the podcast, so people feel like they know us, that they get to, you know, hopefully I build credibility. I don't really try to sell on the podcast. Uh, sure. Then, you know, I hope to drive people in to see me speak. Uh, and then I have my, we do our own seminar every year, the Big Rig Boot Camp. We have it coming up in June. We're registration is opening soon, by the way. I will pitch that. Uh, and then, you know, the hope is you come, you, you learn from me more there. I become more of an authority. You maybe get to know me. We talk. Uh, and then from there, frankly, we target the people. If you look like someone that's, you know, that gets both gets good cases and is open to the idea of, of teaming up with people on them, well, then, you know, those people get a little extra love and, uh, but it just putting a podcast out there doesn't necessarily lead to cases either. And uh, sure, it was yeah, years it's, of this. It's the, it's the whole suite. Yeah, it was years before the podcast led to case. And and I didn't go into the podcast with an intent of getting cases. I actually I did it as a lark. It just seemed like a something fun to do, and I was making enough money where I could afford to spend. I mean, I spend three hours a month on three to four hours a month on the podcast. It's not a big. Sure. Uh, it's not a big time suck for me anymore. Um, but I just love it and I'm able to talk to people like you and learn from them. Uh, but you know, has it led to a couple of really big cases? Yeah, it has. And the other thing I, where I don't know how much it's helped on when I already have a relationship with somebody, but I don't necessarily have time to see them as often as I would like to, does it keep me top of mind and make them feel like they still have the relationship with me because they hear my voice twice a month, even though, you know, as we've grown from, you know, when I was a three or four lawyer firm and, you know, I had eight or 10 main referral sources, I could really give them a lot of attention. Now that we're sure. an 11 lawyer firm and we've got 40 or 50 decent referral sources, well, it's hard for me to go have as many lunches and dinners and drinks as I want to have. And so I think this helps with that too. Right. Yeah, that's great. So it's, you know, it's a different medium. I think podcasts probably a little better for me to be, I think it would be a little harder to build a, a, a podcast that non-lawyers would want to listen to enough to start sending you cases. I think the, the social is probably a lot better for that. Uh, I think temperament wise, I'm probably better suited for podcasting. <laughs> no, it is. It, I mean, it, it, it is tough. I mean, I, I can't tell you. Uh, I mean, we get mean comments, nasty comments. We get phone calls all the time to our office. Um, it's just part of the nature of the beast by yeah. by going to the masses rather than, you know, targeted audience, with, which, you know, trial lawyer nation is, which is yeah. trial lawyers. Right. Um, but but I mean, I, I think. 
Yeah, you know, I, I think it's great. I mean, to me, in my mind, as a young trial lawyer, wannabe trial lawyer, you know, I, when I when I think of, you know, who are the trial lawyers, your name always comes up because I I listen to Trial Lawyer Nation. I've been listening since probably the, the inception. No, it's it's amazing. So like, one thing, do you know Joe Freed out of Atlanta? Yes. Great guy. But one of the things he did, I think is brilliant, is that they do like a, a, a breakfast, I think it's like once a month, or every so often. And they invite whoever, not just their firm, but anyone in the Atlanta area who gets a big verdict, they come and talk about how they got it. And so, you know, at one point, people would say, well, Joe, why are you pay, spending your money to promote someone else getting a verdict at another firm? But sooner or later, the association became big firm, big verdicts in their firm, and then they're also providing value to people. And I think right. people want to do business with people that are, I mean, it's always, you know, what's in it for them, not what's in it for you. So totally. like people that aren't just bragging about themselves, aren't just saying, this is what I'm going to get out of you. Totally. I couldn't agree more. I always say people want to do business with people that they trust. Yeah. That's it. In fact, I'm... I've been toying with changing my marketing message instead of how much we've generated in, in uh, settlements to how much we've paid out in, in referral fees. And come up with a go, I want to pay, you know, I want to pay out $10 million in referral fees in 2024. You know, you want to be a part right. of it or something rather than, you know, just, Jeff, I've been always trying to think, how do you make it about the listener? Sure. I think that's a great message. And for podcasting, it's easy. I just assume I'm the listener and ask what, I, what interests me. <laughs> <It's>, right. <laughs> So anything else that you want to cover? No, no, I, I, I think that's, that's pretty much it. No. I, again, I, I, if I could just harp to the people listening, social media really is not all it's cracked up to be, uh, especially from uh, some uh, maybe dishonest uh, sources. I, I would be really skeptical uh, of anybody who is directly making money off of off of you, if they're selling you this social media product, um, I, like I said, I've literally done hundreds of millions of views on probably every single major platform. Um, I, I can tell you, in my experience, lo a, a thousand views on a video that's eight minutes long is probably worth fifty million views on a video that's fifteen seconds long. Wow. Uh, so, so that's really where I would focus. Um, I do think that there is some value in short form content and that value exclusively right now is to bring people to your long form content. So if you are exclusively doing long or short form content, you're, you're making a mistake. Uh, you, you can do only long form content and get away with it. And, uh, but, but you can't do only short form content. So I would just harp on that and don't get discouraged. It's you're you're not missing out on some crazy multi-billion dollar opportunity. Um, I do think it is going to get only better as younger people get in the workplace and are the ones who need lawyers. But um, slow and steady wins the race. There's nothing wrong with committing to making two videos a week. Do it for 18 months and just see where you're at. And I will tell you the slow and steady win the race. I mean, you, you've already had, you know, incredible success for a five-year lawyer. But when you've been doing, if you keep this up for 20 years and there's going to be people that have spent the last two decades thinking of you as the attorney they think of, uh, right. I think that's really going to start paying dividends. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that's right. You know, I've been very fortunate. I mean, we, we've had some great cases come in. Um, it's, it's definitely the lifeblood of, of, our, of our case generation um, it is social media. I would say 40% of cases, 30, 35, 40% of cases come in organically without having to pay a dollar, which is just fantastic. Um, on top of that, you know, I have a media company that keeps my lights on, you know, and um, we, we've just been, been very lucky. And I, I, you know, and I, and again, I listened to, to you and I listened to all of the, the, the leaders of our industry and, you know, John Morgan harps on, you're never going to get be able to compete with me. He goes, I don't care who you are. I'm going to be able to spend more money than you. I have more resources than you. Well, you know what John Morgan's not going to do? He's not going to spend three hours or four hours a week in front of a camera because he's already got his lifestyle. He's already made. So, so this is a way that I can compete with John Morgan. And in fact, yeah. I look at John Morgan and all the big spenders as kind of my boss because they're the ones spending ad money. And that ad money gets placed on top of my videos because... 
that's the best place for those ads to be objectively. And they're, they're putting money in, the, in my pocket. That's so great. It, it's, just, it's just a way that I can compete with little to no budget. And it's, it's really just sweat equity. It's, it's just hustling. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you. And I, I will say I have an 11-year-old who really wants to be a, a YouTuber and content creator. He's already got his own little channel that he does himself. It's not very – It's but uh, co comments are horrible. Uh, <laughs> people are cruel. That's okay. But, that's that's but, uh, it, I think it is an extremely viable career option. I really do. I think it's yeah. only – there's only more money going into the space as people leave traditional media. It's only getting more and more popular – and there is a way to do it. It's it's really, it, it, it is not luck. There is a science behind it. So if your son um, is really passionate about it, they can make it work. But yes, there will be mean comments. There will be trolls. There will be unsolicited opinions and advice and crazy people calling your office, which, which does happen. Um, but, yeah. but if you can just fight through that and persevere and keep making content regardless, I would really encourage your your child to pursue their passions. I, I, I don't have any kids um, yet. I hope when I do have kids uh, that that they do want to be content creators because I do. I, I just see all of my friends who are in the space because now I'm friends with a lot of the, the biggest yeah. content creators in the world. And I see just how much leverage and how much power they have. I mean, they can they can interject. You know, they they could make a an insert company, a sock company tomorrow, and that sell five hundred units, five thousand units of socks. You know, just just on yeah. a whim. Well, so, I, I will tell you that you know when I talked to Jim Adler, uh, who I grew up watching Texas Hammer commercials, my kids were not impressed. I guarantee you, when I tell my Gavin, my youngest, that I talk to you and he looks you up, he's going to be very impressed. <laughs> So, yeah, see, it's just a new give generation. Give me a little, so. little credibility at home. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and if anyone wants to go find you out in the world, where, where do they find you? You can reach me directly if you go to attorneytom.com. Uh, you can just fill out a query and I'll, I, I get the email so I'll, I can respond to you. My YouTube channel is Attorney Tom. My Facebook channel is Attorney Tom. Um, we have a, oh, it's kind of cut off here on the thing, but we have a catchy number, 855 Tom Wins. Uh, that, that, if you call that probably a receptionist will pick up, not me, but, um, there, there are a lot of ways to contact me. I, I have lawyers reach out to me all the time asking questions. Um, even, you know, little things like what camera should I use? What microphone should I use? More than happy to help out. Um, so, so yeah, um, just give me, Thank a, you so give, much. give me a call. Thank you for joining us on trial lawyer nation. I hope you enjoyed our show. If you'd like to receive updates insider information, and more from Trial Lawyer Nation, sign up for our mailing list at triallawyernation.com. You can also visit our episodes page on the website for show notes and direct links to any resources in this or any past episode. To help more attorneys find our podcast, please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast on any of our social media outlets. If you'd like access to exclusive, plaintiff lawyer-only content and live monthly discussions with me, send a request to join the Trial Lawyer Nation Insider Circle Facebook group. Thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to having you with us next time on Trial Lawyer Nation. Each year, the law firm of Cowan Rodriguez Peacock pays millions of dollars in co-counsel fees to attorneys nationwide on trucking and commercial vehicle cases. If you have an injury case involving death or catastrophic injuries and would like to partner with our firm, please contact us by calling 210-941-1301 to discuss the case in detail and see where we can add value in a partnership. This podcast has been hosted by Michael Cowan and is not intended to nor does it create the attorney-client privilege between our host, guest, and any listener for any reason. Content from the podcast is not to be interpreted as legal advice. All thoughts and opinions expressed herein are only those from which they came.